Welcome to this next session on the Good Food Hub. We're delighted to have a learning event with our friends at MasterCard. Um, the title of the session is Build Your Agritech Business with MasterCard's Community Pass. And we're going to hear a lot more about Community Pass. And there's this kind of powerful platform for people working with rural communities around the world. Um, I'm the director of the Good Food Hub. The Good Food Hub. Uh, we are a platform for SMEs that are making food better around the world, making it more nourishing, sustainable, equitable, resilient. And we were born out of the UN Food System Summit last year, but we need to maintain a community for entrepreneurs around the world that are making food better, both as a way to support your businesses to innovate and scale, because you're doing great work that's really important in the world and important to the future of food but also so we as a group can advocate for ourselves because we're a bit of a missing voice despite being half the food system. So that's the reason we exist. Um, this year we're sponsored by EIT Food. I need to say thank you to them through EU funding for supporting us in this first year. And now for this call, I'm uh, really delighted to have MasterCard with us. Uh, they're going to be sharing their community parts. We're going to go through and hear a bit about how it works and jump into uh, some example of some folks in Uganda uh, with uh, Innovation Village who've been using it to build solutions. So we'll hear directly from them. And then we'll get into some breakout groups with you all to just sort of explore how you might be using it, what your questions are, what pain points you might be facing that you think this could be relevant to. And then we'll come back together, hear what happened in the breakout groups, and then uh, we'll dip into um, kind of what, what you might do practically to, to advance this, what might next steps be if you wanted to actually go forward with this, how would that work? And then we'll open up discussion for some general any final questions as we close out. So we've got an hour and a half together for all that. Should be a good, lively session. Um, actually, let's just take a moment to see who's in the room today. Uh, so, oh, we've got some old friends here. Deepak calling in from DV Exodus in Nepal. You've got, uh, you're already serving, I think, tens of thousands of smallholders around Kathmandu using an agri platform. So you're a fantastic role model here. Um, I know we've got Nikesa from Crop Nutrition Services uh, in, in Kenya. They've got a wide network of smallholders they're working with on uh, soil health. Uh, it looks like um, Jesse from World Central Kitchen in Guatemala. Fantastic. Great to have you here. So a nice range of folks coming in. Um, Lars, okay, you, you're a, working in, in Rwanda, Agritech targeting smallholder farmers with aquaponic solutions. So wonderful to have you all here. And I hope we have a really productive session with you all. Um, let me now introduce us to our team. We've got Corey Baldo, who is based in the US, and he's really leading a lot of thinking on developing uh, the community pass. We've got Mac Hussein, who's based in the UK from MasterCard, and he's um, kind of overseeing this push. Toli Mwanganga, based in Kenya, who's really making sure we get anchored with community pass uh, in East Africa and elsewhere. And then we'll get into CK Japheth, who's really working directly through his work with the Innovation Village in Uganda to um, work directly with some entrepreneurs. So with that said, thanks so much for being here today. I'm going to hand over to Matt and Corey to really explain about why Community Pass. What's it for? Excellent. Thank you very much, Ian, and, and thank you, everybody, uh, for joining today. Um, we, with Community Pass, we've been on a, a journey the, the last several years, and I think we're now at a stage uh, where we're excited about the opportunities for us to, to engage with uh, even more of the, the other companies and individuals in this space and entrepreneurs who are trying to um, solve the, the, the challenges that we're seeing on the ground. Um, so, for a little bit of background on what that journey has looked like. So we are the community pass team and we're a social enterprise within MasterCard. 
And so what that means is we first and foremost care about impact, but we want to do so in a way that is financially sustainable and driving commercial success uh, for the local partners and in, in, um, service providers that we're working with. So as MasterCard, we've seen the benefits that digitization has had for many communities all uh, around the world. And with Community Pass, we focus on who are those individuals and communities who have been left out of uh, some of the, the great digital technology transformations um, and what are the challenges that they face in receiving access to the resources and services that could enable them to break free of a cycle of poverty. And so some of the, the unique challenges are, are things related to unreliable or unre unavailable connectivity. Um, and so there are many communities out there who can't access a lot of the great tools and, and uh, technologies that are being developed because that simply from a connectivity perspective, they, they're not um, that they're not built for them. Uh, challenges related to lack of proper identification. There are billions of people around the world who don't have access to viable ID. And even if they do have, for example, different types of government ID, that they don't have the, a digital ID, which can be important in accessing many types of critical services. And beyond a, a range of challenges that come with these related to access to, to basic services or financial resilience, the fact that digital exclusion also leads in many ways to financial exclusion. And so these communities are not able to access services that um, they might need in terms of, of credit or other financial services that they, they need to improve their, their lives and their livelihoods. And so we then looked and said, okay, well, who are the service providers that are, are working in this space? And there are a range of them, and these are for-profits, these are non-profits, these are governments, and they're currently in a situation where each one needs to reinvent the wheel uh, when it comes to being able to work with these marginalized or digitally excluded communities. They have to invest a, a lot and it's very inefficient for them to go out there and connect. And, and many of them are, are doing fantastic work in doing so, but what role can we play in understanding, well, those same individuals who are maybe a parent who is in need of quality education for their child, that same individual is also a patient who's in need of healthcare access, or they're a farmer who is in need of different services to grow their, their livelihood and, and their productivity there. And so what can we do as MasterCard to develop infrastructure, this digital infrastructure that is interoperable and can be used by many different service providers that is designed from the start for these remote communities while holding to MasterCard standards in terms of safety and security and privacy and user experience. And so what we started with that journey is how do we develop solutions that local partners can use to digitalize specific ecosystems? And so in the agriculture space, we've developed a platform that digitizes agricultural value chains um, and through that enable financial inclusion. And so we currently have more than a million farmers who are on board to that platform with programs across India, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. Um, in the micro commerce space, and so in communities that otherwise would only be using cash because they are transacting in such small uh, dollar figures with each transaction that traditional payment networks don't reach them. Uh, with Commerce Pass, over 200,000 consumers are now able to use digital payments in Mozambique. And in the health space, we have digitized vaccination records with Wellness Pass, We're working with ministries of health in Mauritania and Ethiopia. And next year, hopefully, it will, we'll be reaching millions uh, of citizens through those programs. And so from this, we begin to have, we've begun to have an impact um, that we want to have on these communities through digitization. We've learned a lot about what is what's needed for service providers to better reach them and better work with them. Uh, and now the key question for us is how do we increase that the scale of our impact beyond just the, the services that we, we've developed uh, ourselves. So I'll hand it over to, to Corey to see from that how has the uh, how the journeys evolved. Great, thank you. Um, my name's Corey Votto. Uh, it's very nice to be here and excited to have the chance to, to speak with you all and um, really looking forward to the breakout groups coming up to get to hear what you all are doing. Um, yeah, I'm really interested in that. So thank you for, for being here. Um, just to build on what Max uh, was saying, right? So we at MasterCard have over the years been focused on building applications um, 
and you know, working to deliver them um, in the community, right? And as we've done that, we've learned a lot of things. And one of the things we've learned is there's sort of a common set of core components that's necessary and, you know, and helpful, right, for each of these kinds of applications. And so as we built the various applications Mac was referring to, um, we've started to pull out those core pieces um, into what we're calling sort of the, the common community path platform. Um, so in that, the graphic on the prior slide at the bottom, you know, that you know, sort of core, core component that is used to power both our existing community path product that MasterCard offers, but then also to give you all the opportunity through applications that you might be building to utilize that those same core components, right? So the idea is that you know you all fit it in that box in green of sort of new customer solutions built by you, but powered by the community path platform. Um, so if we go to the next slide, so the various things that as we've learned that you know we see as common and you know core to many of these kinds of applications uh, really are four things, right? Um, one is this concept of a functional identity, right? Yeah, people you know, need to be known. We need to know who they are as we interact with them. Um, and so, you know, we've developed a, you know, a way to you know, have that functional identity with you know, very advanced sort of biometric capabilities, but with you know, privacy um, you know, sort of at the core of our technology. Um, and so that now we can authenticate who a consumer or a you know, community member is when they come to receive a service, right? And you know, do that because we've captured their biometric information and yeah, you know, they can now authenticate, yeah, you know, and yeah, you know, say I am who I say I am, right? And have and have that proof. Um, and there's multiple ways that we do this, right? So you have one through sort of advanced biometrics, um, but then there's also different levels of that, that that one can utilize, right? Whether it's sort of a pin code or just pretty frankly presence of an, an uh, I, you know, a card or a, you know that has their name on it, but yeah, you know, sort of differing levels of Technology advancement, and security, and so forth that could be on that on that functional identity, right? Um, second is sort of a common set of digital acceptance devices, right? Or we you know call them points of interaction um, service devices, right? And these are really Android applications, or excuse me, Android devices, tablets, uh, phones, right? That have the Community Pass platform technology on it, um, and then enable you to install the application that you might be doing and you might be building on that device. And now it has the ability to interact with that functional identity, that, you know, that um, service that we, that we have, you know, and also interact in an offline capacity, right? And so, you know, can we do that authentication even when that digital acceptance device might be in a rural community, doesn't have internet or cell service at the time, um, but can still support you know, that authentication, you know, and can we validate that this you know, person is who he, she says she is. Um, and then when it's back online, can they communicate back to your servers, to the past servers, to you know, store the relevant data, right? So it has the, you know, supports the ability to, you know, still execute digitized transactions in an authenticated manner, even when, you know, we, we don't have connectivity at the time. The third piece is, you know, where, where do you store some of this data, especially sort of in offline capacity? So we, we've developed what we refer to as sort of a shared wallet service, right? And this is, um, can take on different form factors, um, you know, where you basically are storing data and that biometric token that we talked about on a device, normally a card, right? Looks, looks, you know, looks like a credit card, has a chip on it, or looks, yeah, a, a card that has a QR code on it. And it can it can hold some data, right? Um, and it can hold that data, you know, um, for multiple programs that exist out in the world, right? And so, if you know, one of you has a service that you're providing through the Community Pass application, and another one of you has a service you're providing, that same card by the consumer can be used 
so that is sort of this infrastructure now that's available for multiple service providers to to share and to to utilize together. Um, yeah, help you drive down yeah you know, the overall cost of some of just the underlying infrastructure that you often need to deliver whatever uh, service it is that you might be delivering. So those are the, the three main components and then also data services, right? The um, ability to make sure that we're capturing information about interactions um, you know, in a secure privacy by design driven manner. Um, and so these are really the four main components of this community path platform. Right, which is a lot of what we've learned over the years that is yeah, necessary, not just for our applications, yeah, but for many other similar applications. So if we move to the next slide, um, <clears throat> just to bring this to life a little bit more. Um, so starting on the bottom right, yeah, we let yeah, we have a an, an agent or you know, a person in the field that is going to the local farm, or this is the person that works at the farm cooperative, right? And he has an Android device with uh, an application that you know you all uh, build that that sits on that device is in addition to the community path yeah, um, software. And then that device now has the ability to communicate and, and exchange data with this multi-wallet device that the end consumer has, right? So the card on the left, the QR code, and there's the uh, identity capability, um, you know, that gives us the ability to, to connect and communicate between those two, two devices in a secure, you know, authenticated manner. And so, again, this is sort of the foundation, the platform, you know, or, you know sometimes we refer to this as sort of the rails. Um, and the idea is that, any technology organization, you know, or organizations like yourself, right, can now build solutions that you know, ride on these rails, right, that utilize this underlying framework. Um, and so really that's what we're trying to do, right, is give you all the opportunity to take advantage of this technology, this infrastructure, this platform uh, to build solutions um, you know, that you know, help you know, serve those in your communities you know, and, do so um, in a really cost-effective uh, manner because a lot of this underlying technology we've helped take care of for you, right? As, as opposed to having to build the biometric capability and other things, you, we can provide that. So if we go to the next slide, um, yeah, as we think about some of the key benefits, right? Increasing access and reach, right? The, the fact that this works in an offline capacity um, yeah, it allows digital transactions to be able to occur in our you know, digital in, in, uh, interactions, right? It doesn't have to be sort of transactions in the traditional sense of the word, um, but can operate in remote communities, right? Yeah, you know, when there's limited connectivity. Um, we believe it helps reduce the cost of service delivery because there's that shared digital infrastructure. Um, yeah, and then yeah, that will help sort of operational efficiency. Um, yeah with reducing the risk and yeah, make, you know, having comfort and you know, the security of the sort of MasterCard systems behind it. So that's the quick intro of sort of the journey that we've been on uh, where MasterCard started and how we're evolving um, to really to be able to help you all scale and take advantage uh, of the learnings that we've had so far. So I think we're going to proceed now to a little bit of a video um, kind of highlighting some of the benefits yeah, um, of Community Pass. Around the world, there are 550 million smallholder farmers, yet one third of all food production is wasted and 800 million individuals go hungry. Imagine a world where poor farmers can easily sell their crops at market, enabling them to enhance their outputs and grow their businesses. Today, more than 3 million people die from vaccine-preventable diseases, half of them children under five. Imagine a world where families can readily immunize their children, ensuring a healthy start to life. Globally, over 260 million children are not in school. 
Imagine a world where parents and administrators can more conveniently engage with schools and teachers, permitting children to stay in school and realize their full potential. Imagine a world where innovation and technology improve the lives of those most in need. At MasterCard, we believe the world we imagine is possible and we're building it. Community Pass or Compass is a digital tool that unlocks access to services for underserved people and communities through a single user experience. A pass that allows them to access markets and appropriate subsidies, receive quality healthcare, mobilize the necessary resources to keep children in school and more. For our clients, financial institutions, technology providers, not-for-profit organizations and governments, Compass securely collects and provides advanced analytics and data services to help them deliver more services to more people more efficiently. Today, we can empower people and create ecosystems that match needs with capabilities. Today, we can pave the path from poverty to prosperity. Today, we can turn imagination into reality. Wonderful, thank you. That was really inspiring, Corey. Um, and uh, yeah, as, a, as an entrepreneur myself, I know I'm always having ideas about things that I could do, uh, but often when I start thinking of them in terms of digital solutions or apps, it's overwhelming uh, to think about all the things, the technical pieces that would need to be put in place. And it feels like when I listen to you talk, it's like you've built the foundation on which maybe I can build my house. Suddenly the idea of building my house feels a little less intimidating because some of the, the basic infrastructure perhaps is already there for me to use and tap into. Um, I think you've used the analogy of the plumbing is in place. Um, and so uh, I'm very curious uh, to move on to, to, to CK Japheth here who works for Innovation Village. It's a hub for entrepreneurs in Uganda and you've been working with entrepreneurs so fascinating to hear what it's like for a Ugandan entrepreneur to be given access to this platform and what that unlocks in terms of their creativity. What, what, what happens next when they see this? How do they run with it? What, what can they create? What's your experience, CK? Thanks for joining us. All right. Thanks for having me, Ian, and uh, everybody on the call. It's nice to connect with you and hope we can take this conversation beyond just this call. I like what you said, Ian about uh, this being a, a foundation you can build your house on. Because in my context, that's what it really is. Um, and as an entrepreneur, it's you know, a step forward uh, as a partnership for the Innovation Village, but more importantly, for the ecosystem and the entrepreneurs that we seek to, uh, to, to, to work with. And I think my 26 hour day job is working with entrepreneurs and the aspirations they have and trying to explore how we can unlock uh, the value by solving biggest uh, challenges for communities and businesses and also industries. And, and that's what we really do at the uh, Innovation Village. Uh, if you have built, building a setup is hard anywhere in the world, uh, anywhere you're located. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're in the Americas or in Africa, but you know, it's pretty more difficult and an emerging ecosystem uh, like ours, where you don't have the capital, you know, you don't have uh, the right mentors. A typical mentor in an early ecosystem like ours is probably someone who works in a bank and is trying to advise a startup how to start a startup, uh, not someone who has exited a startup. Uh, so building in such ecosystems is extremely, extremely uh, hard. And what we've set up as the Innovation Village is that fantastic infrastructure that entrepreneurs can come and build together in a community. So we run five innovation centers across the country, a community of about 50,000 entrepreneurs that we work with um, to build that ecosystem that they need. Now, five key offerings, including access to the capital they need for the stage they are at, uh, access to market opportunities, B2B relationships, uh, the technology infrastructure, uh, and then of course the acceleration that they need. But a key component any entrepreneur would require are the right strategic partnerships. Now, of course, MasterCard is a global 
uh, technology company. And there are so many other global technology companies that are working in ecosystems like ours. And the typical approach for a, typical, a, a global company is to offer you know, uh, uh, access to local entrepreneurs as a way of you know, supporting them to get onto um, their platforms uh, as a way you know, help them begin to scale up and so many other different models. Um, I think for me, what's different and special with this community first partnership is it's not just seeking to give you access to the infrastructure, but the most important component for, for us and for the ecosystem is it is seeking to go into a commercial, a structured commercial partnership with you, the agri-tech or you, the company. So they've already offered and built that digital rails that you can plug and play in and really get that uh, shared confidence and infrastructure that uh, can enable you to build and go as a, as a tech uh, entrepreneur. And being in partnership with you know, MasterCard uh, already begins to give confidence uh, to potential investors, potential partners, and they've taken away the big uh, weight of what you would be building if you were not working with MasterCard. So it brings a lot of, you know, a lot of confidence. And of course, in our particular case, what we're trying to achieve is uh, on board about 3.4 million people, um, on, in, in two excluded people, underserved communities in two sectors like agriculture, education, and uh, MSME sectors. So one of the things I've picked up working with MasterCard and Community Pass is really the ambition of scale. Um, I mean, just this month, we're trying to reach a million farmers in a quarter, and there's a, a, a playbook to that, you know, and they're very confident that we're going to uh, achieve that. So wow. the partnership in there is that you, you, you already begin to hit this understanding of what it means to be able to scale uh, your startup. So with the confidence already, um, you, 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 you get onto the right track of building uh, your, 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 your startup. A number of the component, components uh, on the platform in the, in the initiative that we're rolling out, uh, remove the friction that a typical entrepreneur would otherwise be investing in to be able to build their company. I'll give you an example. So components like the digital infrastructure, so we'll have the cards in there, the POS devices, all those will already be you know, offered to, to, to uh, the, the, the solution partners, the entrepreneurs that we work with. Um, and if you look at most of the companies and setups that are trying to build solutions in our markets, each of them will tell you that they have an agent network. And somehow, uh, whoever has a bigger agent network, uh, seems to be doing better. But no startup sets up a company to build an agent network. It's not your core business. So part of what we'll also be offering under the community pass umbrella is a shared agent network such that you as an entrepreneur can focus on doing what you do best uh, as, as, mm -hmm. as the entrepreneur. And then like I already alluded, uh, there's a big component of commercial partnerships. So at the end of this, when we're standing on top of the mountain, seeing how far we've come, uh, we'll have supported 50 uh, startups to get into commercial partnership you know, with MasterCard, such that we can all grow that ecosystem together. And of course, we don't forget the last component um, of the importance of digital skilling and supporting the communities we're trying to onboard onto the platform uh, to be uh, ready you know, digitally. So I think for me, uh, this is not just a, a technology company that's global, that's offering a platform. Uh, there is a intention, and they could have rolled out Community Pass as MasterCard, but there's an underlying intention to scale the platform out, leveraging entrepreneurs in an ecosystem, in a partnership that's uh, beneficial to everybody that is participating in there. Such a big and brilliant opportunity. So I know in Uganda, it's where we've started out that real fast implementation of the platform. 
uh, at scale. Uh, but of course, I know Mastercard is not a Ugandan company, so I'm quite confident they'll be coming to your market. Uh, the best you can do if you're in an emerging market building for underserved communities, if communities uh, pass speaks to you, I think the best you can do is be the best partner uh, they'll be coming to uh, when the time comes. Uh, because I'll give an example of, uh, of an agri-tech that, that has really picked this up in Uganda, Your Uganda. They have a platform called Your Pay Agri. Um, as we roll out community pass with them, uh, they've already white labeled that component of farm pass on community pass. And the 1 million farmers we're talking about are already being onboarded uh, on two, the, 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 the ag techs uh, platform. So be that partner who would be you know, first to um, explore this opportunity, jump on it and you know, scale with the confidence that comes with this shared infrastructure that you know, a global tech a partner has made available in the true sense of partnership, not just giving access such that you, know, you can get you know, use the platforms, yeah. but I'll be happy to interact further in the conversation. Thank you for having me here once again. Wow, that's fantastic. It's so exciting to hear what's really happening. And I was struck by a few things there. One is realizing the credibility it gives an early stage entrepreneur to have a big company like MasterCard with its kind of global reputation being a partner that must instantly open doors for you. Secondly, I was struck by actually the scale of thinking that people are thinking pretty big already in Uganda at this early stage about the number of farmers you're going to reach and reach fast. And thirdly, this idea of actually there being agents so that you're sharing out that you've got one network that lots of different entrepreneurs can figure out building their tool and then somebody you've, you've got that network that's easier to build and is actually perhaps for those agents, they've got a real micro business on their hands as they're serving multiple different kind of platforms and services here. So the set of things that popped out for me about what's happening when it gets applied in practice. Um, it's really exciting to hear that journey. So um, we're going to take a moment now to break into um, some different groups, but I'm going to uh, hand over to Tolly to, to do that for us. Actually, there's just um, within that, just to be clear, because there's a slight change here, we've got three breakout groups uh, that I've set up. One's going to go with Corey, and we're going to have a a rapporteur there, which at the end is going to share what ideas came out from that discussion. That's going to be Nikesa from Crop, Nut, um, Crop Nuts. Um, then with Mac, uh, I've asked Kelvin, uh, who's a Rwandan entrepreneur, uh, to be the rapporteur. And then with Tolly, we've got my old friend Joe from Nigeria, um, and who's got, got another agri-tech business, Farm Core as well. Um, and he'll be the rapporteur in that group. So uh, let me hand over to you, Tolly, just to explain some of the questions, and then I'll send us off into our breakout groups. Great. Um, thanks. Thanks, Ian. So hi, everyone. My name is uh, Tolle. I work at MasterCAD um, within the Community Pass Partnership Program team. And so I think at this juncture, what we want to do is send you guys to some breakout rooms where you have a rich discussion within the team around three key questions that uh, we've posed here. I think we'll just post this on the, on, the, on the individual breakout rooms. But ideally what we're trying to find from you guys and, and, and we'd love you guys to share back with us is these three questions. So the first one is around the type of pain points that you guys are, are working on or opportunities you see with the, the end customer segment that you're working with. So what are some of the pain points or opportunities that you guys are trying to address uh, for, the, for the end customer that you're working with? The second one is around technology. So we're trying to also have a conversation around are there any challenges that you see or experience currently that are preventing you from kind of being able to develop enhanced digital solutions to reach these uh, target customers at scale? And the last question is tied back to what you've seen uh, from Corey and Mark around Community Pass and how you envision or you would foresee kind of Community Pass enabling you to better address these challenges or opportunities that you're looking to build for. So I think we'll set, we'll spend, um, I think it's 15 minutes, yeah, 
in the yeah. in the breakout rooms, uh, and then we'll we'll come back and then have the the teams present back their findings from each of the rooms. Super, I'm sending you off to your rooms now, so it should, I'm not, I actually don't quite know how you experience it on your own, but I think in a moment you'll all disappear off <laughs> to separate rooms, or you may need to click on something to accept the invitation. I let that overrun a little bit longer than we thought. It felt like people still had a lot to share, it means we've slightly curtailed the discussion at the end. Um, we do have three rapporteurs who are going to just give us two minutes of highlights from each session, just like some of the main ideas that really popped out from you as you heard people talking about what their pain points were and how Community Pass might help them. And the CASA, um, let's, let's, let's leave with you. I, I, I have to say, looking at our group, I've realized one of our pain points is we don't have enough women in the agri-tech space. There's, uh, as you and thankfully Helen's just joined as well. But um, let's start with let's start with you, Nikesa. Uh, thank you. I was just about to comment on the same that <laughs> where are the women. <laughs> so yeah, so some of the pain points that have been read, maybe just introduce my group. We are about six of us. Uh, William Nunda, William Dare from Nigeria. Nunda didn't mention where he was from. Then Waris Zaris from Puerto Costa Rica. Uh, Rogina dropped off. Um, then we have uh, Subash from Nepal and then Corey who was representing MasterCard. So some of the pain points that were raised was about desegregation of the channels for dissemination of information to farmers. And especially when it comes to quality data, um, like for example, uh, Subash mentioned about offering quality data to the banks, which, which he does not have that information. So they have to start collecting that information right from the beginning. There's also an issue about market, uh, the misalignment of market information, uh, considering they're also building an e-commerce platform. Getting this information is really difficult um, from, from the, what, what they're interacting with. Um, William mentioned that the pain point for him, William Nunda, about signing up of farmers, because again, he's in the agro dealer space. So signing up of farmers being smallholder in nature is a problem because this information is not also readily available. Um, what, what they're seeing as um, uh, there was the dry card by William Dare. What I picked is that uh, they need this information shared out to the farmers, the awareness bit. They have an, uh, a technology which they would want to have uh, farmers have knowledge. How do they then, you know, it's like a reverse. How do they get this information out to the farmers? And also uh, the utilization of this platform as a food trade balance sheet, where if somebody logged in, they would be able to know how much of uh, good quality products are available for purchase. So through the same platform. Um, uh, one of the other things that was uh, what, what they are looking forward to MasterCard, uh, the Compass, what it probably they would feel would deliver was about, um, um, accessing of the, the mobile, like in, in uh, Puerto Rico, Costa Rica, for example, farmers have mobile devices, but the challenge might be internet. So having the fact that it can work offline, then is a um, plus for them. And uh, they would want to use this to develop better business management skills and use it as a training, um, you know, training skills for, for, the, for their end user. Uh, because currently what they are doing is just giving them basic skills on, you know, like sales record, inventory and all that, but they would want to integrate better management skills through this uh, kind of platform. Um, then uh, the other part was in terms of aggregation of say a prepayment for, for prepayment for services and products. Like for example, if a farmer can, farmers can be able to put in like, a prepayment for accessing services where now the service providers and product providers can be able to utilize this to ensure that you know that risk of trading then is minimized so i hope i've captured everything corey well done there was a lot a <laughs> lot to cover um let's just actually just keep rolling onto the next group between us we'll get a flavor of the discussions so kelvin uh i know i i volunteered you at the last minute but maybe you can give us some highlights from your group 
Thank you, Ian. I think from our group, we had uh, basically submissions from two companies or startups. One was Bibi from Nigeria Farmco. And basically what Farmco is doing is, is basically aggregating uh, produce from farmers and linking it to off takers or buyers. And uh, so they're having a lot of challenges along there. While on the other side, uh, it's Shamba Pro for myself from Rwanda. We're basically trying to organize the data, data from the farmer sign, signing up data, and then also data of production and uh, financial data, and being able to put that together with remote sensing data such that all kinds of stakeholders can then plug into this data. And we have a lower cost of engagement in the ecosystem, right from the farmer and from all the ecosystem and basically to make the ecosystem more efficient. So just running through the challenges, both of us came up with the idea of internet. Many areas around Africa do not have stable internet. So they, there's an importance of an offline solution where you can have data, whether there's internet or not, and you can sync probably later. There's also an issue of signing up of farmers, the high cost of signing up of farmers, either using an agent or using technology or having an in-person kind of meeting and also the risk of getting inaccurate data using self-registration me measures because of issues like literacy or differences of languages and, and so on. And then there was also a challenge of trust that when companies go to farmers sometimes, they are not trusted, but if they go with a partner, then they're able to build trust in the form of guaranteeing each other in the eyes of the farmer. So the farmer is more free to be able to basically uh, get their data. There's also the high cost of technology in that sometimes we know the kind of technology that we need to use, but there's a high cost attached to that technology. And also there's also a consequence of uh, what you call the technology stack. Then how do you arrange this technology such that it's sustainable? It does not become more complicated and it actually solves the basic problems uh, in, in a very uh, simple manner. So I think, um, also, there was a challenge of then, okay, you register a farmer. So between a farmer growing a crop and harvesting, how do you how are you able to update that data continuously? You know, have accurate updated data continuously that can create a record that then these other text the stakeholders, financiers, banks can be able to depend on to make good and clear and accurate decisions mm -hmm. on the profiles or the credit profiles of these farmers. So in brief, that's that's what came out of our group. Gosh, you're covering a lot as well. Um, okay, and Job, you were the um, rapporteur for the final group. Uh, lovely to see you. Uh, I haven't seen you in a long you, time. Uh, anyway, yeah. yeah what, the, what highlights did you did you pick from your group? Thank you so much, Ian. And I mean, it's been good being part of this um, session. So, in a group. Um, we started off, of course, with a pain point. And with FarmCo, I was just giving an example to the group how we wanted to onboard, you know, a new farmers, you know, for this cycle of maize farming. And we developed this app to do the onboarding. But the extension agent came back to us every time that because of internet, you know, they couldn't onboard those farmers. It was a pain point, you know, and when we thought about what other solution could we use? Should we use maybe WhatsApp bots, you know, to make this happen, you know? And we wanted to collect all the kinds of data. It was really, really difficult. So that was pain point on our own side. But then we also had Iron, you know, who talked about, you know, the classes of farmers that we have today. You know, we have the very young ones also who could use technology, but we also have to think about how much of our rural farmers, especially in continent are like, Africa actually literate. So if you build mm -hmm. solutions for them, you need one that doesn't, that's not so high tech and that can basically walk offline, you know. And Akili also, you know, spoke to that also. Um, so uh, Ayan is working from South Africa, Akili is working from DRC and it's the same issue. So they are building, you know, like a platform, marketplace platform, and they deal with, farmers that are very you know not that literate and hold you know and you know you have issues with onboarding collecting data you know to be able to say i have this produce to sell and then jc from what food in central america you know 
talked about the issue. We have to also think about sustainability and climate change, you know, in all of these issues. So it's not just the issue of you trying to onboard farmers, but we also have to think about, you know, when it comes to farmers growing food sustainably, and I'm being able to show that I'm following good agricultural practices and the issues of even record keeping for farmers, you know, that this could really, this is, these are also pain points, record keeping. And I know that Kelvin has spoken also, you know, to that, you know, so, and then we had, of course, Lars from Rwanda, you know, but I, I've talked about, you know, so Lars, they work in aquaponics, they deliver high tech equipment to farmers to be able to grow foods, you know, with aquaponics. So, in so these were the challenges, um, these are the pain points. And we, so we started talking about what solutions then we could have, you know, on, on our side as, as farm call. So if if we integrate, you know, with these rails being built by MasterCard, so we see all kinds of things, credit profiling, you know, um, risk, risk profiling, we see other solutions, you know, that we could lay on top of these and show to our partner financial institutions. You know, we see that happening and for example, you know, to, to what JC talked about, we just talked about, for example, you could build a provenance solution for a coffee farmer, you know, that's grown their food sustainably that on, 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 and they, you know, they've been onboarded with community pass. And then, you know, on the other hand, the consumer, whether it's the consumer who can see that and then reward that farmer, you know, uh, because they, you know, they can show that this was the farmer that grew this food in this part of Uganda, they grew this coffee, and then you can tip in for them, you know, and that comes back to them. So we, we, we talked about that. And of course, for record keeping, all kinds of analytics to show to banks, you know, that you could build on these. Um, and, you know, coming to last, last said that, you know, he sees these as something that we could integrate with banks, you know. So the, the food companies, the agri-tech companies that are here collect those data, and then these can be integrated, you know, with some of the solutions that banks already have. So this is visibility across the supply chain. So banks can see the records and then they can be able to, you know, make decisions on time. And so these were some of the highlights. I hope I was able to cover up you know, most of it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, it's, it seems very consistent across all the groups and quite diverse geographies. Um, and for the MasterCard team, I'm struck by, uh, like, these entrepreneurs, these are your people. You're definitely feels like you're coming in with a solution that can help unlock some really driven entrepreneurs who are in the right place and working at scale with the kind of smallholders you're uh, aiming to reach. Totally. We've got a few minutes for you to say and share with us. All right, how do we go from here? What do we what do we do to kind of um, take community pass and actually start building build these propositions in a sense of partnership? So let us know. I think the last section we have here is just talking about how how do I get engaged, how do I get involved? And so what we've done within the Community Pass team is we've set up this program called the Community Pass Partnership Program, which allows you to one get access to kind of like what we're calling the sandbox environment, which allows you to get access to the POI device technology that we Corey talked about earlier, the multi wallet or card technology that allows you to then store customer data and transact across multiple um, agent networks, and then the last one is being able to create those digital identities that I uh, also mentioned. So that sandbox environment allows you to kind of test these services, integrate to them um, before kind of taking it uh, at scale. So we, through the Community Pass Partnership Program, allow you to one, start getting access to these tools, getting to connect them and integrate to your services and solutions. And then as you start prototyping, uh, and, and engaging customers, testing them out uh, to kind of identify what business model you're going to uh, take to a partner at scale. We also provide kind of documentation. So we have a, what we're calling a developer zone that has technology, um, has documentation that allows you to be able to walk through that sandbox environment, test the, the solution that you're, you're, you're building. And we have some, what we're calling guides and, and, and walkthroughs that allow you to better integrate the solution in an easy way. Tied to that, we also have what we're calling our partner success team, uh, which is part of where, where I come from. 
and we help you along that process as you integrate to the solution um, in terms of how to integrate from a tech point of view, but then also guide you in terms of any new functionality that might be coming out uh, to be able to allow you to get easy access and early access to it and then be able to continuously test and iterate as you as you go along integrating your solution. So that's kind of like the what we're calling the community pass uh, partnership program uh, that you know the, the second question I guess is how then do I get involved? And so what we're targeting at as we as we scale this program out is what we're calling community pass solution partners. So allow me to just give a, a highlight of who these are. These are what we're calling a provider in the ecosystem who's built some sort of technology. Uh, so for example, in the ag space, you're building applications. We've talked you know, during our breakouts around uh, companies that you guys are working with that are building technology targeted at smallholder farmers. And so we're looking for partners who have built some technology. Uh, that technology has been proven to potentially scale. Um, and so you have a couple of, you know, thousands of customers on board the technology are using it, but are looking for capabilities such as community pass to allow you to faster scale at a lower cost um, across multiple markets, uh, but as, as well across the segments that you serve. And so the technology solution partner is, or community pass solution partner is a company that works either offering the services as a to other businesses. So you might be working with other businesses who need to implement and are using a technology, or you work directly with and consumers uh, who are the smallholder farmers, for example, in this case, um, and are looking to use or see value in using kind of like the solutions that you're providing. And so we have two channels to be able to access um, the partner program as we speak. The first one is directly through MasterCard. And that's kind of like an invitation only uh, model that we've, we've set up where, you know, information and I'll, I'll post this link in the chat uh, for you guys later. Uh, you can get more details around what the partnership program is and, you know, the criteria around the type of partners we work with, as well as how, how you know, potentially the application form looks like and what else you get um, in addition to the capabilities that I talked about. So that's kind of like an invite only program where we go through some screening process and evaluation uh, before the partner gets into the program. The second piece, which is the partner working with partner incubators. Uh, so we've started working, I think you guys have all um, seen and, and, and heard from uh, CK Jaffet. And so we're working with, we're starting to work with partner incubators and the first one is based in Uganda. So for those uh, entrepreneurs and companies that are based in Uganda, I think, might be an opportune time to potentially reach out to uh, CK based in Uganda. So we're looking to scale this model as well into other markets, but we started with Uganda as the initial partner program to start testing this model of how, you know, work, we can work through partner incubators to allow you get access to, you know, the training, the commercial modeling um, and the scale partner opportunity. And so those are currently the two ways to get involved within Community Pass uh, and the partner program at the moment. But as as we continue and as more channels open up, I think we'll share through uh, the Good Food Hub as well. Super. Well, thank you so much, Tolly. Um, how we do? So we just got probably one or two more questions um, that if we wanna have a little moment of discussion, is there anybody that wants to put their hand up because they've got a question? Job, you're the fastest man with your hand. What's your question? Thank you so much, Aaron. Um, first, I want to make a case that um, good food be considered as one of the innovation partners. And so we could directly go through you to get onboarded, you know, <laughs> for community pass. <laughs> I didn't set just, him up for that. That so, wasn't me. He just said yeah. that on his own account, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. So because, <laughs> um, so, I mean, BB was at the AGRF um, this year uh, to, uh, because I couldn't make it down, but she was there. But to, just to, to speak to the scale of the problem that we, we have thousands of farmers that we need to onboard and build all kinds of solutions on. We have partner financial institutions and banks in Nigeria. And we just think that this is, this is the right technology, you know, to carry along as we go to meet them. So my, 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 that's my, my first request is, of course, if we could go through good food, 
and then get onboarded in the, into this program, we think it would be great. My second question would be to Tolly totally to say that, um, is MasterCard looking to bring the other services? I know beyond um, this technology that, I mean, your main business, you know, is credit, you know. Um, is there going to be integration of these with all the kind of services that you offer? Maybe not now, maybe for that long the journey, um, because it then begin to make, and, and, and are you going to bring your partners, you know, because of course we know you work with banks, you know, this, that look to be like, this is a sweet spot for agri-tech companies, for you and then the banks that you work with, you know, to come together. And there are all kinds of solutions that we could build. Um, just to give an example, there is a service that I use every time I'm outside of um, Nigeria, you know, and it was built on MasterCard. You know, it, it helps you to send money from Nigeria to abroad. And then one time I know that they got cut off and millions of customers were cut off immediately. You know, so you could see how these, you know, and, and now they're back, you know, the company, you know, that built on, on MasterCard is back and now, you know, people are enjoying this service. So, <laughs> I mean, there are all kinds of things that I'm thinking in my head, we have to come to one or two solutions that we want to build, but can you bring your other services, you know, that we could lay on? Thank you. Thanks, Job. I'm just going to take the question from Lakeza, and then I'm actually going to invite CK and Tolly to close out in response to those questions and to wrap up the call overall so we stay on time. So, Lakeza, you've got the floor. Yeah, mine is not really a question, but just um, maybe a comment to MasterCard. Is there a possibility of sharing the partners that you're already working with? For example, like um, the innovation villages in Uganda, What, who are you working with within uh, East Africa, and especially in Kenya, because we'd be interested to plug in. And if it's not, how can we then, um, you know, be um, enrolled probably to work with you. I know you've shared a link, but we can take these conversations. We'll be definitely interested, yeah. Thank you. Okay, well, um, so let's just, we kind of just got, what have I got? Four minutes left um, to kind of close out. So I'd say just from where I'm sitting, it's been exciting to have you as entrepreneurs all around the world who are facing similar problems. It's almost like you're finding each other. I think there's a real community of practice here that we could perhaps could to think about forming between you all, because uh, you must have a lot to learn from each other, as well as having a, perhaps initiating a partnership with um, MasterCard. So, um, but let me hand over to, um, Tole and then CK, just any final thoughts and perhaps any responses to the, the, the points raised by Nikesa and Job? Tole. Uh, yeah, I think I can go first. Um, and as I do that, I've put up the last slide. I would definitely love your feedback on the session. So as, I, as, as we finalize, I think uh, you guys can go ahead as, as well and just provide us with feedback. So I think the question on the partners that we work with, the answer is we are looking to, you know, as Corey mentioned during the presentation, this is kind of like Community Pass has evolved over time. And so we are in that process of starting to think about what financial services and capabilities as well we can provide within the Community Pass partner platform to allow entrepreneurs and tech solution partners that we're working with to better get benefits um, beyond kind of like what we provide uh, in addition to what we provide within the Community Pass platform. So yes, we are in that process. And as I said, you know, part of being part of the Community Pass Partnership Program allows you to get early access to some of those capabilities as they come, come along down the line. Um, I think to Nakesa's question around partners, I think let's have a separate conversation. Um, we'd definitely love to get more insights around from you, what type of partners you're looking to work with. Um, and we can start, we can, you know, explore kind of what, what type of partners you guys are working with that create synergies between what MasterCard and how MasterCard is operating within, say, for example, <laughs> Kenya. So we can definitely have a, that conversation. Sure, um, I think in closing on my end, um, thank you to all the entrepreneurs for sharing kind of like what they're working on, the, 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 the type of problems they're, they're solving for. Um, I think my one point um, that stood out is leave no farmer behind is kind of like what I 
got a sense of. Um, and that this is because I think uh, when we talk about technology and as we build technology, we think about kind of like using apps and things like that. But then I think a really good point was brought out in a group around, we need to think about the types of smallholder farmers who are mostly the older generation and how we can also bring them along the journey as we evolve technology. So thank you all. Wonderful, leave no farmer behind. CK, you're yeah. in the bridge, you're the bridge man here between the entrepreneurs and the <laughs> Mastercard platform. Have you, you, you've witnessed all these entrepreneurs around the world being interested and in working on the front line of trying to <laughs> bring tech solutions. Any final reflections from you? Yeah, no, and I think it's really interesting listening. Like you say, the problems are similar across the globe. And I was particularly interested in a question about if Mastercard brings in uh, all the other partners that they the, the ecosystem. Um, and I guess I put up my hand because the, that's just what the program is about. Uh, when we're launching the program, I think one of the senior people at MasterCard helped to clarify that what MasterCard does is ecosystem organizing, you know. So practically on ground, how the program has come to life is, for example, we're already working with the biggest farmer federation that has about 6 million farmers uh, as, as co-partners. So these 6 million uh, farmers are going to be made available to the tech entrepreneurs. So an entrepreneur doesn't have to worry about reaching them. They're already there. Uh, you have access to them. We're already working with the association of financial institutions. We're working with the biggest buyer associations. And uh, these are partners in MasterCard's ecosystem that have already been onboarded and have made available for the entrepreneurs to explore how to work with them as they build their solution. So I uh, just wanted to give that from the practical sense of what's already happening on the ground. Mm. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Well, our time, I've already had one minute overrun. Um, but yes, if you look there, we've got somebody asked about an email. Corey's just put in an email there, cp.partnerprogram at mastercard.com. I will uh, write a summary and with Stella's help, we'll get that sent around to you on the Good Food Hub. So there'll be some information circulating there. Um, that should be out be by early next week. So that will have some of these links and things and um, Mastercard team, hopefully we can get your PowerPoint slides and put those as a link as well. Um, but thank you all so much. It's been great. Your work is really inspiring. You're doing the hard work of making our food system work right where it's needed, both kind of working directly with farms and bringing new tech solutions that hopefully will break through and, and uh, make a difference in the world. So thank you for being who you are. Thank you for your work. And uh, hopefully this is the beginning of a bit of a journey together. <laughs>